So I got one of the OEM tools pilot bearing removers off of Amazon and a lot of people said that the jaw height is too tall to get into a Corvette pilot bearing. So a lot of times what you can do is you can punch one of the pins out and take one of the jaws out, slip this one in first, and then weasel this guy in there next to it, and then squeeze the pin back in, and then take the pilot bearing out. So we're gonna try that. If it doesn't work, then we're gonna have to grind these down a little bit. Worst case scenario, I'm gonna have to take both jaws out. I feel like I'm trying to pick a lock. All right, so I'm gonna go grind this one down a little bit, and then we'll have another whack at it. So just a little public service announcement. On a lot of LS based engines, you cannot use the old trick of packing the back of the crank with grease or bread or whatever you want to use. If you do that, you may be taking your engine out. There she goes. Just need now I can see if I can smash those pins back in there. Okay, back together. Okay, so a lot of times, if I haven't said okay enough, I will literally wrench this thing in there very tightly. And then we are gonna take some heat, probably with the heat gun, to the back of the crank. And then I might actually even take some contact cleaner, something cold, and spray it just on the pilot bearing before we start whacking on this thing. And hopefully that'll do the trick. This car doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of miles on it, so hopefully it's not super stuck in there. Some guys have had to go so far as to cut them out with a Dremel tool, which is never fun. Where are you at? Huh? I'm right here. Oh, now I see you. We're gonna go to work. Yeah. So you enjoy yourself. That's in there pretty damn tight. Okay, we're just about ready to give this a go. Never hold the heat gun in one place for very long unless you don't like your rear main seal.
everything back. This sucks a little bit. I need more room. Okay, I'm gonna give her a little squirt of the juice up in the center. Give her some wax. This is coming out, boys. Trouble free. So just take your time. Take all the steps necessary. And you shouldn't have any problems getting that guy out of there. Didn't even hardly damage it, which is usually they get mutilated. All right, I'm gonna go put the new uh, pilot bearing in the freezer and we'll get ready to install it. Fancy packaging. Huh. It's interesting. Looks like it comes with uh, two different style throw out bearings. We need this one. So that's what we came in to get. Not sure what that's for. New flywheel bolts. Well, you can tell this wasn't packaged by Amazon. Oh, she's a beefy girl. That is beautiful. That's kind of interesting. The pressure plate itself is, uh, it looks like it's a Luke part, which I use a lot of Luke clutches. So there's all kinds of uh, marks on this clutch so that when you take it apart to assemble it on the car, when you put it back together, they've got this assembly balanced. We want to make sure these parts go back where they were. So there's a debate that's lived on for since the beginning of the C5 Corvette about balancing new clutches to the old clutch. Even though the LS1 engine is internally balanced, C5 Corvettes had external balanced flywheels to touch up the balance because Corvette owners are snobs and they can't stand the tiniest bit of vibration. I know a few guys have worked on Corvettes, especially C5s ever since they were brand new. I'm talking about in a shop environment. And uh, they've all told me that they literally just put their clutches in and they don't send them off to the machine shop. And uh, They've never had any uh, return visits because guys were complaining that their car vibrated so bad they couldn't stand it. La 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 la. So yeah, this car was, um, this car literally wouldn't do a, a burnout anymore. It would just do a clutch burnout. 
which is interesting because when you look at the clutch disc, it, it's like full meat. I think about uh, 34,000 miles is all. So it looks like on my 97 that uh, this flywheel didn't have any weight added to it. But like I said, I'm not going to worry about that. We are going to run it as Monster delivered it. It's not uncommon to see heat marks like this on a clutch, but uh, this one definitely was not holding anymore. So like I said, I'm going to go get that throw out bearing, or uh, excuse me, pilot bearing stuck in the freezer, and we're going to get back after this job. So here's the monster partway taken apart. So it's kind of interesting the way this pressure plate is built. The second disc is in there already. Like there's no user serviceable parts there. This is this ring right here. These teeth are on the second disc which engage the first disc. And so obviously you have to take this clutch apart to get the flywheel put in the car. Everything's marked. Like all these spacers have camouflage war paint on them. So you want to make sure you put all of this stuff back where it goes. These spacers shouldn't matter. There's no markings on them. Marked. This guy should be marked. So in order to put this whole clutch assembly up inside that tiny C5 Corvette bell housing with the bell housing still in the car I'm pretty sure that I read somewhere that you have to knock out one pin preferably the one at the bottom so that you can shove the clutch up in there and then hang it on the two other pins and then tap this pin back in that's supposed to work so that's the plan that we're going with. But first, we've got to get the pilot bearing pounded back in. It is in the freezer right now. Okay, we got the monster flywheel up into position. The kit comes with new, um, I believe they're OEM Corvette style shallow uh, head flywheel bolts that are pre loctited I've went ahead and already started them down in a, a star pattern. It's a three-step torquing process. So you start out at like 17 foot-pounds in a star pattern. And then, I think it's 17, don't quote me on that. If you go 20, your engine's not gonna explode. But uh, uh, 17, 37 is the second pass, and then 74 is the final pass. We are ready to do our 37 foot-pound pass. I had to get a thinner wall socket. The impact socket doesn't fit properly. Oops, not in a star. I wasn't going in a star pattern. That one moved a little bit. Some of them moved a little bit, and some of them didn't. Now I'm probably gonna have to start counter holding it, which is gonna be a pain in the ass with the flywheel holder. 
and I think I'm going to start doing it without the extensions so that this doesn't have a bunch of tendency to want to slip off. Using a six point socket, so it's got to be somewhat precise on there. All right, here we go. Try not to punch yourself. It's definitely a little bit tricky feeling because these are really shallow headed bolts. one all right calling that good okay now I've got to rotate this around until the hole with the pin that I punched out is at the bottom. Just a little bit more. Okay. Now it's ready for um, putting the pilot bearing in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna heat this back up and I put the flywheel on first so that it's a little bit more of a heat sink. And I'm gonna get that heated up, then we're gonna grab the uh, pilot bearing out of the freezer and get that tapped in there. Okay, that's flush. You guys were pointing off into La La Land. It's all right though, you didn't miss anything. All right, I think we got the old pilot bearing tapped in without mutilating it. So now we're ready to get a clean cloth and uh, degrease this flywheel. I almost wonder if it would be easier to engage this guy into the pressure plate first like that and then hoist this menagerie up in there either way I'm not really looking forward to it so our big fat green balance stripe is pointing at nine o'clock Thank you. 
currently I think I have one dowel started. I would like to get both of them started if that's possible. But I don't know that it is. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this around. Okay, so our big fat green stripe is lined up. You stay. in the world. Oh, I lost some glove. Okay, both dowels should be engaged now. And our alignment tool went right in and it's not wobbly at all. Now I think we can start putting this together. Okay, we gotta pop that back loose for a second to fit this dowel is lathe turned right here. Has to go in from the back side of the pressure plate. That's okay, we can make that happen. goes without saying whatever you do don't let this clutch fall on you I think I'm gonna put a bolt in there for a little insurance these are gonna get loctited after a minute this guy in carefully Monster instructions say that you should use gnarly red Loctite on the pressure plate bolts. I don't have any red Loctite, so I'm going to use gnarly green Loctite on the pressure plate bolts. Okay, I'm going to get all these pressure plate bolts in and starting started and then we'll talk about the torque sequence in a minute. Okay, we're back. I've got all the pressure plate bolts started, all the spacers where they go, and I evenly squashed the pressure plate down onto the clutch, making sure that our centering tool is always happy. 
this is a very tight centering tool so it, it doesn't have a lot of slop to it which is good oh and the torque on the flywheel bolts is 15 37 and 74 the torque on the pressure plate bolts for these is this is from monsters instructions for the pressure plate these allen screws are uh, 20 first pass then 40 second pass and then 52 third pass in a star pattern so that's gonna take a minute that's gonna take a lot of minutes So I'm probably not going to show all of that because you'll go insane and just quit watching. Okay, now we're going to move up to 40. And I'm just going to buzz my way through the rest of this and then we'll revisit the next step which is going to be measuring the uh, distance for the throw out bearing. We're at the step of this project where we are going to measure the dimension between the throw out bearing and the fingers on the pressure plate. When you're using a monster clutch they're very particular about that dimension and having the um, slave cylinder shimmed properly. One of the first things they tell you is that the slave cylinder should be fully compressed, which this one is, the plastics on the base. Then we're going to screw this to the, in our case, the torque tube with no shims in it and uh, we'll begin to get our dimensions. We'll be using the top portion of this chart because we have a removable bell housing. And then in our case, the face of the uh, torque tube. They recommend that you take the spring out of the um, throw out bearing. So in order to do that, there's this uh, ground spot right here on the slave cylinder. You're going to rotate this plastic around until it hits a stop. Doesn't matter which way you go, either way. Then you're going to take a screwdriver and just kind of twist out right here a little bit. And then this will pop off of the base. And you can then pop the spring out of there because you want this all the way down like that. Now we can go get our dimensions. Okay, so, all right, if you're gonna use a straight edge or something flat like this to use to get a measurement from, you obviously need to take the thickness, this dimension and thickness out of the dimension that you get from your measurement or your numbers are gonna be a little on the goofy side. Now that being said, if you use the same straight edge in the same manner on both measurements, in theory it should not matter. So I'll probably do this, I don't know, three or four times and just kind of get an average. You want to try and be obviously as square as you can. Oh, 2.666. I think we want to get a different number than 666. It's not uncommon for the fingers to be all exact. I think we're going to stick with 2.666. OK, 
Okay, we're bottomed out. Two point four six seven. Let's see if I can pull this away from that. Stand a little bit. Four one. A should never be smaller than B. A is bigger than B. So let's take 250 thousandths out of each number. 2 2.2220 2.416 minus 2.220 equals 0.196. I believe that the gap is supposed to be between uh, 0 .60, 0 0.065 and 0.200. Now I don't know if I should still put a shim in that to bring it closer too tighter. I'm going to have to go research that a minute. So a little bit of an update. Isaac and I got the transmission and the torque tube hoisted back up into position. and We were able to fight the torque tube back into the clutch and with a normal amount of trouble I would say. We didn't have to really force anything but we had to shove on it pretty darn good to get that guy seated up in there so I strongly encourage with your new clutch hydraulics um, and we also we got the speed bleeder put in like I showed the other day before you put the whole back end of the car back together I strongly encourage that you put the bolts in the torque tube hook up your uh, quick disconnect right here get that hooked up and then uh, get the uh, throw out bearing and slave assembly bled and then leak check it um, because if that happens to leak and you put this whole entire car back together and you don't bleed it till last it goes without saying that if there's a problem in there you're taking the whole entire car back apart again to repair any leaks that are in there at least with the uh, the setup that I'm running I'm running the tick uh, remote bleeder and the way that fitting is put in there you can't I just don't think there's any way possible that you could service that if it leaks without taking the torque tube back out so keep that in mind 
Let's go up top side and uh, take a look at the speed bleeder and try and get this clutch bled. Okay, so we've got the remote speed bleeder routed up through the firewall. Uh, the same routing that I used to get my couple other wires up routed, uh, like my wide band and such, up by the firewall. And uh, it fits pretty nicely here. I went ahead and turkey bastered out the reservoir down to empty and then filled it with some fresh dot three. That is the turkey bastered fluid out of there into our clear cup. And I've just got the speed bleeder cracked and I think we're ready to cycle some fluid through it. If I can reach the clutch pedal, it's very tight in here. Cup. I'm having to run the clutch pedal with a broom handle. The nice thing about that speed bleeder, of course, is you can uh, bleed it one person remotely and not have to worry about closing that valve every time. Do it again of course if it doesn't feel right but like I said it's it's a pretty small system it's not like you got a quart of fluid in this thing okay that should be closed Okay, we're ready to pressurize the system. Wish me luck. I couldn't even begin to imagine trying to bleed this clutch system with the factory bleeder nipple sticking out of the torque tube. Even on a lift, it would just be a miserable pain in the ass. All right, it doesn't feel too bad. I do think I'm gonna go ahead and, just for shits and grins, try and bleed it one more time. There's a tiny little dead spot at the beginning of the pedal depression, but not too bad for right out of the gate. The clutch would definitely work, I'm sure. So I'm gonna go down below, check for leaks, and then uh, we'll revisit putting the rear suspension and everything back together. Okay. Time for an update after day number 10 or however many it seems like. Day number 11 billion. Yesterday, I didn't really film any of it because it's not really that important. And sometimes you just don't feel like filming things. You just want to get stuff done. The headers are put back in, both sides torqued up. Spark plug wires are put back in, which is never fun, especially on the driver's side. I also got the mid-pipe put back in yesterday. And the V-bands put on. And uh, so, as I covered in the disassembly part of this video, 
the headers have to come loose so that you can get the clutch cover off. Um, you have to do all the clutch work through this clutch cover. You can't get this cover off with the headers in the way. Um, the tunnel plates put back up, of course. The torque tube, the five main attach bolts from the torque tube into the bell housing. Those are torqued to 37 foot-pounds. The uh, 40 or however many it is, little tiny five millimeter headed bolts for the tunnel plate. Those are all put back in and torqued to 89 inch pounds precisely. I'm being sarcastic, of course. I couldn't find the torque for the clutch cover. There's uh, some 10 millimeter headed bolts and some 13 millimeter headed bolts. It's not that important. I wasn't intending to torque them, but I know some people, especially some people that don't have a lot of experience or maybe lack of confidence in their calibrated wrists, um, they like to have the torque specs, and I get that. But I just I don't have confident numbers in the clutch cover, so I just tighten those down as I saw fit. And uh, the front of the car should be back together. I've actuated the clutch a bunch of times and made sure that uh, we don't have a leak anywhere in the throw out bearing slave assembly or the speed bleeder. The remote speed bleeder. Boy, what a lifesaver. That is an awesome piece to have. I think what I'm going to do next is. Is that a good paper cup? I think we're going to go ahead and put the uh, shifter back together real quick. I uh, probably won't really film any of that because it's boring. And uh, it's a classic put it back together in the reverse you took it apart. So I'm going to get that banged out real quick. And then we'll get to work on the heavy hitter stuff and go over some of the torques, uh, torque specs for the rear suspension. That stuff you really probably do want to use a torque wrench on. Mid-afternoon update number 4,627. Starting to get very tired on this here job. Oh, what the heck? How did titanium mufflers get on this car? Didn't used to have titanium mufflers. Somehow we got titanium mufflers installed on this car and the exhaust is fully hooked up and done. ABS pump is back in place. That is a custom ABS bushing, a pump bushing isolator made out of Gorilla Tape. Temporary. If anybody ever loses one of these bushings, they're the same bushing on a C4. So I was able to find one on eBay for like seven bucks. Anyways, the cradle is all the way back up to the frame. Those get torqued to 81 foot pounds. Like I said on disassembly, resist the urge to bang those back on with a bunch of ugga duggas in the impact gun. That's not good. It'll break the rivet off in the frame that's holding the flag nut. Actually, it's not even a flag nut, because if it was a flag nut, it wouldn't need a rivet. But that's a story for another day. Cradle's done, torqued. Exhaust system is done and torqued. Got a pair of fresh gaskets. I always goober those up with just a film of uh, red RTV so that you don't have to get berserk with the torque, which just ends up bending the flanges. Um, sway bar is back on. Let's go over some more torques here. Sway bar torques. Oh, sorry, stabilizer shaft. The lower is 70, 
this guy right here because it is also a control arm. That guy right there is 70 because that's also a control arm bolt. The upper bolt is just for the sway bar and that one is precisely 49 foot pounds. Let's see what else did we have apart? Um, da, 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 da. Upper control arm bolts are 81 foot pounds. And upper shock mount, da, 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 those are little tiny bolts, 22 foot pounds. Brake caliper bolts are ginormous. I believe, uh, oh, that's on a different page. But anyways, they're 125 foot pounds. I think, in the grand scheme of things, I am down to torquing the suspension hardware. I'm gonna just put a little load on with the floor jack and get that stuff torqued up. And then I need to finish this side and tidy up the wire harness. And then I believe that uh, we're ready to take it down off, off of the lift. Uh, I can't think of any other torques that I might be missing. Oh, I did. I also changed my rear differential, the rear axle seals with the newest version of that seal because the old seals were original and they leak just a little bit, but I've heard of and seen leakier ones on C5s. So I got the axles plugged back in and they're into the new seals, so that's good. I think probably not going to turn the camera back on until until we uh, start this thing up and uh, maybe bring y'all along for a trip around the uh, big block around the around here the the big city block to start breaking this clutch in uh, monster says uh, I think it goes for all of their clutches but they basically want 500 miles of stop and go traffic before you start pouring the coals to it so that's going to take a minute actually and uh, with I did that gas that's going to be kind of expensive to get 500 miles of stop and go uh, driving on the clutch so anyways we'll see y'all when we start this guy back up this is going to be a cold start BTR2 cam uh, long tube headers and LSA supercharger. We're going from a Corsa Sport catback to Z06 uh, titanium catback. Let's see what it sounds like. Hopefully y'all can see out the somewhat filthy windshield. We got the clutch done and the car moves under its own power. So this is just gonna kind of be a short video on uh, initial impressions of the Monster LT1-S twin disc clutch. As big jet airplanes fly by. We're 
still in the break-in phases on this clutch. I was a little uh, taken aback, so to speak, when I was reading Monster's instructions on the break-in procedure. And basically they say that they want 500 miles of stop-and-go traffic before you uh, start going full throttle on the clutch. That's going to take me forever. And it's going to be stupid expensive with I did that gas. The release point is absolutely perfect. I can't emphasize enough that you follow Monster's instructions on uh, setting up the throw out bearing and shimmy.
so this is going to be kind of for it's going to be a video in and of itself um, so far the monster clutch is great and then also i'm going to tack this on the end of my how to change a c5 corvette clutch tutorial if you will so if you have any questions on changing the clutch or saw something in the video that i could have done a little better or maybe more efficient or took things apart that didn't need to so on and so forth feel free to put them down in the comments below there will be more content coming for this car uh, throughout the year so stay tuned for that and we'll see you on the next one